Hello everybody, Mike's here. So, the last chap, Claire, has to rescue against all this skulking armies and living cells in this lava and dragging themselves into where she wanted to rescue because she has to rescue Cole before everything goes wrong or it's, or it's too late. Alright, let's get going to this chapter 21. Oh, by the way, the whole book, I mean, this whole book is called Way to Depart It. It is by the creator. Is it, is it really the creator of Ninjago? I think it's the creator of Ninjago. Tommy Andreessen, so give, give, her, give himself a credit for this, okay? Will do. Give himself some credit. Alright, time to read chapter 21. I don't like doing this, but I cannot take any chances. The pulsing light from the next room and the light from my scar let me see fleeting glimpses of a person, a girl, struggling in my arms. A sharp edge from something inside her backpack pokes me in my chest as I pull her towards me. Her teeth bite into my hand and I feel a sharp pain shoot up through my arm, yet I force myself to not bellow out the pain. I sneak a peek at Klaus, who waves his arms around in big, slow gestures. Whatever he's creating is getting bigger all the time. Its light is blinding, and a loud, otherworldly hum echoes through the room. He has not noticed anything, so I focus my attention back on. My jaw drops. Claire? Another bite. This time, my grip slips. Let go of me, you bag of bones! She hisses. Shh, Claire, it's me, Cole. I am not a skulkin. For a few minutes, she keeps struggling. Then she relaxes as I lose my grip and allow her to turn and face me. I eject again. That Klaus still hasn't heard anything. Lucky. What are you doing here, Claire? Isn't this a dream? Claire hesitates then lights up in broad smile that seems totally inappropriate given the circumstances. Are you implying that you dream about me, Earth Boy? What? No. No. Why would I? No. Claire has always had the ability to catch me off guard, and her presence here blows my mind. Before I can pull myself together to come up with a more eloquent reply, she continues, I'm here to help you. You're still in numb. Or part of you is still in mom. I don't know how this magical sorcery ninja business works. Klaus has brought you, part of you, here and he's holding you captive. He is an Edo sorcerer and he is behind this big plot to build up some concentration of the Edo power. He wants to tear open some rift to do something terrible. A sharp pain shoots through my brain. My scar hurts so much. Claire looks puzzled. At it as I flinch. How do you know all this? I ask her. She smiles again. Maybe I'm just really smart, or maybe I'm not and have had some help. She opens her backpack and my jaw drops yet again. Explosions go off nearby and skull can fly through the air. The sound of their screams give me a headache. Spikes shoot out of the ground as another skull can trigger some sort of trap and is impaled on spikes, which is shoot out of the ground. Another is hit by something unseen in the dark. The cheering applause from the people trapped in the cages makes my head hurt. I slam my big metallic fists together to make them shut up, but there is no metallic clank. Now my hands hurt. What is wrong with me? What am I doing here? More skull can get taken out by traps, and others start to panic, but there are so many of them that losing a few won't matter, so I order them to press on. Soon, we will be at the town. As we step up into a clearing between the trees, it becomes visible. A few skull can are hit by shrukin, and some fall into a cover pit. I order skull can to bring the shackled prisoners to the front. The light of the sun setting over the town's tall spire burns in my eyes. I look down at my hands. They hurt. 
I don't feel like myself. I tell the Skulkin to get ready to fight. I don't know why. I feel my scar. The cage rocks beneath me. I find myself mildly amused by seeing the Skulkin get taken out by traps. My fellow students cheer next to me. But the laughter stops as the man with the big fist orders Skulkin to bring people to the front of the procession. I hope no one will get hurt. The sounds of my traps have stopped. For what it was worth, I hope it has thinned the ranks of whatever is coming our way. Should I alert and arm the people of Nom? I look towards the industrial district. I hope it won't be necessary. If my father's idea works, the Phantom Ninja will soon have an army to command of her own. If only there is enough time, I look towards the city hall. Cole, come back to us. We need you. Cole, I am so sorry. I brought this upon you. This was the last thing I expected to see here in the underworld. In Clara's hands, the gold framed portrait of Master Yang looks saddened. As he is taking in the surroundings, he cuts off my questions and explains what he has learned. While Claire was going to the Fire Temple in Destiny Shadow and entered the underworld through some thin spot, he has rummaged the Temple Edge to library to learn as much as he can. Apparently, Edo is ancient ninjagan for earth. The quality of Edo magic practiced several hundreds of years ago was to rise above the earth. He explains how he has just now figured out that the martial art he emitted, air jutsu, is powered by Edo. He mutters something about that also being the reason the temple of air jutsu, an ancient Edo temple, must have become airborne. I try to understand, but all I hear is a lot of use of the word Edo, and a whole lot of vague connections between stuff. I ask him to break it down and feed me only the basics. Some of it I already know. Other things is news to me, and I struggle to understand it. But I guess Sensei Yang knows what he's talking about. Here goes. 1. Edo power is somehow the element of Earth in a tainted and magically corrupted form. It is bad. 2. I am the master of Earth, and I am so somehow connected to the Edo. 3. Air just draws on Edo power. We shouldn't do it anymore. 4. I am still in norm, yet in a deep trance. I am also here is lost on me. 5. Klaus has made sure that Edo air buildings that have been re-erected in Num, which Concentrate Eda power. My the master Earth presence there is amplifying it. Six, Klaus is not lying. If a sufficient amount Eda power is allowed to build up, the scar left on my forehead after we ejitsu through the rift to the part realm will rip open and allow the part Edo sorcerers and their acolytes back into Ninjago. They will need vessels to stay in Ninjago. Namely, the non-villagers in Skulkin. 7. I need to get back to Nam and stop this from happening. Do you follow? No? Me neither. But that's how Sensei Yang says it all fits together. But, before I can finish my thoughts, Klaus calls out in some ancient tongue. The portal glows brightly. My blood freezes as I hear the sound of vows in Skulkin heading our way. Now we could see as close perspective. So what was happening to the power of the Edo and Klaus just now be the center of it and take over this Edo power to open the the power realm yeah, the power realm and destroy no some it's not destroy something. It was you no know, taken over and Put all this element into it, and there is some behind the scenes of the air jutsu, which um, which they've taught themselves. It's af after they instead of doing the spin jutsu, they do the air jutsu, as what you saw from season uh, probably season five or season six. I don't know, but 
I, I still remember I still remember them and man Cole has this story I mean Cole has a lot of story to tell but Cole has a lot of thoughts too about um where where this could be where Klaus's plans are going to be is his plans going to happen I don't know we'll find out Okay, guys, that is it. That's the end of uh, chapter 21 of Way of the Departed. See you guys next time. So long.